I told you, a woman never dies in a wedding dress. There is a thin line between reality and dream. The period after the Lebanese civil war was one of hope and change. I did not see the rebirth, however. I could only see the scars. Beirut homes and buildings riddled with bullet holes. Electricity wires that crisscrossed the city, pirated cable. The cloud of hashish that covered the sky, traffic. Traffic. People began to rebuild their lives. The war was being erased. Plastic and glass were in. Silicon replaced reality. In La Vie en Rose, our people were drowning. Just like their buildings, they were becoming sexy and alluring on the outside, but hollow and empty on the inside. People were so humiliated and broken from the war that the only thing they could do was to forget. And there were at least a million and one ways to be able to forget in Lebanon. They smoke and drank and snorted everything they could find. We wrote poetry. We jumped over fences into abandoned buildings and drank vodka under the stars. We parked on the corniche and made out. Love and sex and drugs and alcohol were our new law and order. In so many ways, the war never really ended. Our neighbors continued to drop bombs on us. In the year 2000, the Israeli army withdrew after having occupied the south of Lebanon for 22 years. Because of the occupation, until the year 2000, I had gone through my entire life without ever having visited the village of my ancestors, Hasbaya. What they don't tell you about bombs is how loud they are. Your whole house shakes. The windows rattle. The electricity may suddenly go off. You hear your neighbors screaming somewhere down the street. You lose people you love. I have a fever. I'm not sure how long I've been like this, and no one knows for sure what caused it. My mother sits beside my bed. She's trying to find God so that she may ask him to let me live. I have a fever. I'm jumping on top of the couch. I start singing from the top of my lungs. I'm hallucinating. It is an incredible rush. I'm sick, but I don't feel sick. I've beat death so many times. I have a fever. This time, I want it to last. His body is grinding up against mine. Our hips are joined. We're dancing in circles. In Beirut, I am delirious. I'm so far away from death. I cannot help but feel that I'm part of something much greater than this whore we call Beirut. The years from now, someone may not even be able to find Beirut on the map. She will be the lost city of Atlantis. She has built herself seven times, but how long can this charade go on? One day, it's all going to end. And when it does, it will be beautiful. I will walk down to the beach. Maya will already be there, waiting for me. The two of us will sit down and watch the last sunset. We will walk into the water, and I will not be afraid. Anything is better than war, even death. Beirut is too big to wear a wedding dress. She cannot live forever. Beirut, I love you. I told you. Tanerka
شب اتوبیس دور متحف کردیش با یاتریلو با یاتریلو اربا طیب ار لمستش فجر با یاتریلو با یاتریلو عسکر یا بطخ ترموس ترموس آرانیس با یاتریلو با یا So I'm sorry about the quality we're not being great, but I hope that gives you a little bit more of a sense of the city that Zena is coming from and the uh, issues that the city um, has faced. Um, so as as you can see, you know these these two um, young women have a remarkable, uh, constructive way of looking at the issues um, that they deal with as artists. Um, the title of today's discussion is Subverting Kitsch, um, and while they both deal with ideas around kitsch and they are both interested in subverting and subversion and critique, I think the fact that they are both um, activists and both um, sort of <coughs> constructivists is also um, it's, it's very powerful and, and important, um, and I think there are, you know, it's it's quite unique in in some ways. So both of you um, have uh, discussed today that you know how you are, um, that you work in in different ways, and that your practice um, spans um, different media, um, in order to be accessible, and to have um, the greatest reach possible. I'm interested, though, in sort of the reverse of the question, given that we are in a museum context, um, and uh, I want to know a little bit about why you're not just a pop star or just a writer or a filmmaker. What is it about the visual arts and the discourse of visual art that makes your, that wh what does that add to your practice? Um, the objects that you make and, and the process of, of being in this kind of context. Sorry, um, who, who wants to go first? I don't, it's up to you. Zaina, do you want to go first? Uh, sure. Okay. I think that as artists, maybe we move a little bit slower. Um, we have time, maybe more time to uh, reflect on things. And um, we have the opportunity to uh, uh, work on having a clear voice um, that reflects our uh, true personality or circumstances, uh, not so much concerned with fulfilling uh, specific audience requirements. Um, I think it's a much slower paced world. And, uh, you know, there's also the beautiful act of creation that when you make something with your hands, the flow of energy that goes from your mind into your hands and then you see it on paper or you see it as a sculpture, I think that, at least for me, there's a lot of spirituality involved in that. And uh, it's, you know, it gives a big self, uh, sense of fulfillment. Um, so slower pace, more time to think and feel. <laughs> Great, thank you. Svetnikov. Um, yeah, I'm quite similar in the way that if I'm just a pop star, then you know I have to write songs that sell. <laughs> I have to write, like, y if you've heard Japanese pop uh, in Shibuya, <laughs> it's very different from the kind of songs I write. And uh, so I think art, you know, because I'm in the art world, I, I'm able to really think about the topic I want to discuss. I don't have to think about how many CDs to sell at all. And some people say, oh, if you're an activist, then why don't you become a politician? But also, like, I think art is capable of sort of 
compared to doing politics, art artists can sort of hack into other people's lives, uh, unexpectedly invite people to involve people into a different kind of thinking in a very, you know, in a different space from politics. And also, for me, it's, I, I like reflecting on things. I like, you know, doing research and thinking about what I like to talk about. And I think I only get about one or two good ideas a year. It's, you don't really, you know, you can't really be gushing out like in uh, the world of commercial world. So, it, yeah, so that's kind of how I see it. I like, I, I, w I will never be a pop star or TV personality. I think s some of the work, I, I, did, I did do some of the works and it would bore me to death, <laughs> I think, if I had to do that. <laughs> Uh, all my life, so yeah. Well, you're also a, a scientist, and so that's a very different kind of yeah. of brain. So it's almost like the art allows you to draw these two, your fascination with pop yeah. culture together with the, your sort of technological background, which I think is is a really amazing combination. Yeah, actually, like about about that the science and so when I was studying science, I was I, I had this time when I thought about shall I solve all these problems as a cyborg scientist? Like, shall I cr come up with different technology <laughs> to uh, change, transform myself? Or shall I become an artist and talk about these problems and involve more people into my world of different, like, different kinds of thinking? So I, there was a time when I was thinking about that. So it, it's, yeah, so I sort of moved into the arts side, but yeah. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, I think I, that's one of the commonalities, obviously, between the two of you is sort of this um, attempt to, to make your work in, uh, accessible. And also, you know, the, the way that you both play with, with gender, I think, is, is very interesting. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about that, how that plays out in your own work, but also your, your thoughts about it in relation to one another's. Um, obviously, Zainab, we saw several images of yours, um, including, you know, the ones in the galleries, but also the ones that you've shown here where you're you know dealing with a hyper masculinity and sort of critiquing that in the same way as Sputnika you're critiquing this sort of hyper femininity um, so I'm curious um, to sort of hear more from each of you about what gender means in terms of your work um, and as part of a larger social critique 